It's December and this is the Library Road Show. On the show today, authors, games, and GIS. Welcome to the December edition of the Library Roadshow. I'm Mary Stein, and this is a production of your East Baton Rouge Parish Library System. As we wrap up the year, the library staff wishes you and yours season's readings. The annual Sock It To Me program is still collecting socks for children and adults, and the winter food drive to benefit the Greater Baton Rouge Food Bank is taking place at all library locations all month long. And to help get you into a holiday mood, December features a number of free musical programs. A Dulcimer and Drums holiday concert featuring Madame Dulcimer and Lady Chops will take place throughout the parish. And percussionist Lady Chops will return for three more concerts with Here Come the Bells. So many bells. The Civic Orchestra and the students in EBR School's Talented Music Program will offer up joyful noises at the main library. Henry Turner's Listening Room will gift us with his film festival at the main library on December 10th and at the River Center branch on December 16th. The library's programming schedule is full of holiday movies, story times, crafts, and more. Check it out in this month's edition of The Source, available in print and online, and register for these and other activities via the online calendar at ebrpl.com. Free access to books, audio, and library resources are just a few of the benefits available to you when you get a library card. Need free access to a computer? You get that. Want free access to premium digital resources like Mango Languages and Lynda.com? You get that. Need to book a meeting space? You get that. Heck, you can even check out a telescope or use a digital printer with your library card. If you live in East Baton Rouge Parish, pick up your free library card from your local branch library today. Premium access to everything the library system has to offer is waiting for you. For every topic covered by the print resources, the library tries to offer something digitally as well. And for as many decades as I have worked in the library, CQ Researcher has been a staple for anyone with an inquiring mind trying to balance opinion with fact. It's time to find out more in the digital download. With CQ Researcher, you can learn about major issues from current and historical perspectives and the inner workings of the US government from authoritative, accessible and unbiased sources. Now in its 100th year, CQ Researcher is the choice of students and those looking for a balanced view of today's most pressing social, political and economic issues. Each weekly report covers the given topic in a non-sensationalized manner and many reports feature a pro-con debate, highlighting both sides of the argument. Recent reports have looked at artificial intelligence, fake online reviews, and cryptocurrency. Gain historical perspective from CQ Researcher Archive, offering 4,500 plus reports dating back to 1923 on topics still prevalent today. Have confidence in the information you're gathering. Every report is written by a professional journalist and fully fact-checked. Find this and other reliable information sources free with your library card at ebrpl.com. This database is used by students and adults of any age and interest. Whether researching a hot topic for school or trying to form your own opinion before sharing the subject with your friends or faith community, making a decision for your business, or reaching out to your government officials. Let's shift gears now and go beyond the stacks. It's International Games Day, and we're celebrating with Game On at the library. My name is Darcy. I am the teen programming librarian here at the main library, uh, and today I am here at Game On. Game On is our gigantic, all-ages, family-friendly game event that we celebrate National Games Week with. We will have tons of games on display today and playing a bunch of different ones. So I'm running the Mario Kart game, well, the Mario Kart Switch console, but we'll have tons of board games for all ages. We've got like classics, Uno, Monopoly, those kind of things, but we also have the weird ones like uh, Betrayal at House on the Hill and Dixit and a bunch of other ones that you probably never heard of and that I've never heard of. This event 
event actually ties in with International Games Day, but we also are using it to celebrate all of the amazing game options that you have at your library. We actually circulate games at two of our locations right now, but you can pick them up anywhere. You can just call one of the libraries and see what kind of games we have available, and we'll send them to whichever branch is easy for you. But we are also celebrating our maker spaces. We are doing a miniatures painting workshop later where we 3D printed some minis, and people are going to get to paint those and take them home. We have our VR setup today, which is also part of our maker space kind of setup. Um, and just all of the games you can play in-house at any of our events or programs for different age groups too. So this event really ties into the library's mission because one, it's a family event. It's getting people into the library to see what the library has to offer you. It's in offering a way for people to kind of interact and have a fun day together. It's just a good way to show that the library is here for you and that you can always come to the library for fun. Find out more about our game resources at ebrpl.co slash game on or find more programs like this in your source newsletter every month or in the events calendar at ebrpl.com. I love seeing the mix of ages hard at work on game day. Never let the kids know that games provide you with a stealthy way to introduce STEM and STEAM into their lives, leading to critical thinking skills. It'll be our little secret. And don't forget that games aren't just for kids. Google the Grown Up Gaming League can help you find your game. Stay right there. After the break, Jenna Jureggi joins me for a chat right here on the Library Roadshow. The East Baton Rouge Parish Library believes that preparing children to enter kindergarten is good for us all. That's why we created Press Start, an early learning initiative that provides a free activity booklet every month that explores early literacy skills through play and interaction at home. Get a library card. Sign up for Press Start at ebrpl.com slash kids. You're watching the December edition of the Library Roadshow, everything you need to know about your local library system. Now here at the library, it all starts with the books, and we have a team of staff dedicated to keeping our shelves stocked full of the newest and best. Jenna Jureggi takes the lead for our book collection for adults, and she's here to wish us season's readings. Okay, Jenna, what is on Santa's reading list this holiday season? Okay, so Santa's reading list is not skewing very Christmassy That's this okay. season. It's skewing a little more fantasy. Oh, okay. Um, fantasy is right. Is beating out mysteries. Yeah, I kind of find with among our staff and our patrons that fantasy mostly romanticy. Huh. It's a kind of a genre blending romance and fantasy. There's a love thing at the center, but then you get the familiar dragons, high court, um, fairies, all that kind of thing. So can we love. blame or credit? Game of Thrones and some of these other big series that we see splashing across the silver screen for that? I think we can, but I'll also say that a lot of these romanticies have very um, female forward protagonists. Okay, and that's been a blessing for the last yeah, couple of years yeah. because for so long it was men, men, men yeah, for all the books. Yeah, they're also very steamy. Yeah. Okay, so, <laughs> and that's where when I go and talk to people I say, you know, if you've got the written word, yes. that means you can just really lean into what there is or skip past those pages. Well, it's also on levels. So you yeah. want to ask, like, how steamy are you willing to go? That's right. And so we do have staff that will help yes. you decide, are you ready for this temperature of a book yes. or boiling hot? So what did you bring? So, of course, um, The Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros. This came out, I think, last year or the year before. Um, this one is about a dragon rider, and it's kind of blown up, and it started more as a self-published. TikTok picked it up, like a lot of books these days get picked up. And um, her newest book, Iron Flame, come out, came out November 7th. But it's kind of a funny story. The publisher had to call back a bunch of prints because there was misprints. The small publisher wasn't able to handle all the copies that people wanted. The huge the demand. demand. Right. And so people were having pages upside down, missing pages. They sometimes had the cover had fourth wing instead of iron flame. That's crazy. So <laughs> you will not find the print of this in the library yet because of that misprint. 
but we are um, keeping track of that on Libby, so you'll see lots of extra copies. So ebooks, ebooks through our Overdrive collection. But if okay. you're waiting, you want a print copy of a romantasy. I would go with this Jennifer Armin Trout. Okay. It's called Fall in Ruin and Wrath. It's steamy, a little angsty. Think of it like a grown-up uh, YA, YA book for grown-ups. Um, it's a first in the series, lots of drama, kind of like I, we talked about Game of Thrones, court mm -hmm. drama. Mm -hmm. So this is a good one if you don't have access to the fourth wing. And, and with these books, these are series. A lot of times, yeah. Yeah, so often you get one and then you just trowel through. Yeah, I think readers tend to fall in love with the characters and the world that they're in, so they just want more and more and more. Yeah. And that's part of the reason, too, with the printing and demand, like, they want you to churn out those, the next one in the series. So, constantly. So, mistakes were made. Yeah, they'll, yeah. publishers <laughs> will buy, like, okay, we're buying the three books in this series. And then they're right just away. waiting for the author to and deliver. They're just waiting for and them to take it And you can't just churn it out like no. that and keep your your product at a right. high level. Yes. We want the authors to take their time. We don't we do. want them to yeah. rush. But it is exciting. Yeah. So big fat epics. Yes. So our romanticies. Um, we also, uh, every few years, we ask our staff to kind of, what are they reading? What do they love? And so in the next few weeks, probably early, mid-December, we're going to have books we love this year. So books that were published in 2023 that our staff loved. Um, and just like our patrons in the community, our staff love fantasy. And so T. Kingfisher is AKA Ursula Vernon. This is a good book. It's a retelling. It's a novella, so it's under 150 pages. So quick read for the holidays. Yeah, or for a book reading goal that you have for the new year, mm -hmm. you can read this book in a day. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's a retelling of Sleeping Beauty following a fairy named Toadling. Okay. It's funny and um, I'll have sweet. to read that one. I see yeah. that thorn right there. Exactly. Okay. And you'll finish it like that. Okay. Knowing you. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so let me get into some Christmassy things. Okay, and this one's got a local... A local thing. We have three local authors here. They're actually visiting us in December. Um, and this is faith-centered, a Christian fiction, Christian romance. Um, and it's kind of all around three stories where it snows in Louisiana. Which never happens. Right. So So you can see that it would be um, a very rare thing, very magical, and why some people would fall in love. Okay, and we call those gentle reads as we well. We do, yeah. This is more gentle. Not It's gonna, not going to be steamy like our romanticies. Right, right. <laughs> um, and then we have another new one. This is by Josie Silver. It's a romance. Um, a little steamy as well. She wrote a book in 2018, One Day in December, mm -hmm. and this is a winter in New York, and it's a foodie Xmas or Christmas romance. Well, we love food. We love that, and so it's um, kind of like a romance coupled with all the big holiday emotions. And they put the recipes in. Yes, so this is, if you want to get in a Christmassy uh, mood, this is a book to go to. This is a not a Christmas book. <gasps> but food. But food. Um, <laughs> yeah, kind of, because it's set in a restaurant. I believe Vietnamese. Um, it kind of mixes Vietnamese and soul food. This was a great book. It was my first Brian Washington book that I read, and I just really liked it. He's conversational. His dialogue's really great. Um, so, And he's a Southern author. So right. It was really wonderful. And we're getting kind of towards the time of the year where the Ernest Gaines winner is announced. That should be announced um, very, very soon, but they have their award in January. Right. So we're always looking forward to that, and we make sure to stock up on lots of copies of those books. Right. Mr. Gaines was so generous with his time and sharing his talent with the library yeah. um, for years and years and years, and we miss him. Oh, another regional author. Another regional author, author Jasmine Ward, who's getting so much attention now, which I'm glad she is. Um, this was actually the first book I read of hers, but she is the Oprah Winfrey book mm -hmm. pick for this month. Um, she won the Pol she won the National Book Award and also the MacArthur Genius Grant. These are big. This is big stuff. Yeah, and this yeah. is very. She always has a little bit of Louisiana in there. Mm -hmm. This book specifically is a historical fiction following an enslaved person um, who makes their way to New Orleans. And so it is very uh, serious, obviously, the subject, but she deals it with kind of magical realism in there. 
Um, so it's very poetic. The prose is really beautiful. It's very kind graceful. Of, yeah, lyrical. Um, I really enjoyed it, and I got to see her speak in New Orleans as well at the Baldwin Bookstore. Yeah. So she's just really great. So good stuff. And then one of our standbys, yeah. you know, for years, mysteries ruled at the bestseller list here. And they still do. Yes. Yeah. So but. these kind of these next few are like, they're always going to be big. They always have tons of holds and we always stock up on a lot of them. And so we know they're going to be good no matter what. And so the firm, this is what I think a 30 year um, sequel to, uh, the, to the, firm. the first one. Yeah, right. sorry, The Firm. The Exchange is the sequel. Mm -hmm. So it's just a long time. I think that was the book that put John Grisham kind of on the map. Mm -hmm. um, so this one's back, and you can get it. Mary, I'll have you kind of explain what this kind of special sure. book is. Uh, uh, we have top tens here at the main library because we have so much foot traffic uh, where we got extra copies. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like the lucky day collection. Yes. If you, they're not reservable, uh, they're not renewable, they, they're just there. And if you come to the circulation desk and you see them, you grab them and check them out. They're not going to be cluttering up the hold list or slowing down the hold list. It's just, if you see them, you get them. Yes. And it's going to be those New York Times bestsellers. Yeah. And so you'll see that this one and the fourth wing that I had both have the orange top 10 because I could not find them in print. There's still tons of holds on the regular right. copies. If you are a fast reader, you can get through a book in a week. These are the books I would look for at Main Library. And you can ask, you could call and ask them to check if you'd like the yeah. top 10 display. Yeah, they'll look and see if they... They'll look for you. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. And then... And then, of course, uh, the new Nora, Nora Roberts. Roberts. This is the first in a new trilogy, so this is very big. I know people are excited about this. I think this just is coming out and hitting our shelves probably mm -hmm. this week. And she's always, uh, she and David Baldacci, Baldacci always on the list. Also. So these two are coming out to shelves. I think this week I pulled them off of the carts in the back room. All right. So, so coming soon to now. a library near you. And this and, uh, okay. last one was a huge read this year. Yes. Yeah, so this, um, so it came out, I think last year, but it's gotten so much popularity because it won the Pulitzer this yeah. year. So um, I love Barbara Kingsolver. Is that how you say it? Kingsolver. Kingsolver. I love her books. Um, I have not read this one yet, but it focuses on the opiate crisis. So I think it's very timely, and people are kind of looking yeah. for this information. But this one, um, I'm excited to read as well. Thanks, Jenna. I like to grab magazines for the holidays, too, since they're nice and short. Don't forget that ebooks are real books, too. So if you run out of books to read or listen to over the holidays, the digital library is always open. It only takes a moment to hop into our Libby app and snag a few more books for your digital bookshelf. After the break, regional author Chad LeBlanc plus book reviews from one of our younger library patrons. All that and more coming up next on the Library Roadshow. The East Baton Rouge Parish Library believes that supporting the education of students is good for us all. That's why we provide access to live, in-person, online tutoring through Homework Louisiana, make available free test preparation tools through Learning Express, plus reference tools for all ages. Get a library card. Get free education at ebrpl.com slash homework help. Welcome back to the December edition of the Library Roadshow. My next guest is a local author, historian, and genealogist. Chad LeBlanc was born and raised in Pierrepart, Louisiana, deep in the muddy bayous and murky swamps. Chad is passionate about history and believes that everyone should know where they come from. So his books serve to inform and entertain while reminding people of their heritage. This is certainly true of his latest book entitled Roots of the Bayou, which Chad joins me now by phone to discuss. Chad, how did you actually get your start as an author? I've always loved history and genealogy, and as I learned more about my own heritage, I wanted to find a way to share that with others. What's The Roots of the Bayou really about? The Roots of the Bayou is a historical fiction novel that tells the story of two families, one Acadian and one Spanish from the Canary Islands. It explains how each family comes to be in South Louisiana, the difficulties of them starting a new life here, and how they interact with each other. What inspired you to write this book? The more I've learned about Louisiana history, the more I've realized just how many people are descended from both the Acadians and the Spanish. I wanted to make more people aware of their history 
and thought it would be more engaging to do so within the context of the story. What advice would you give to aspiring authors? Take advantage of current technology and online platforms. They have made publishing your own writings very easy and feasible for anyone at minimal cost. How can our viewers learn more about you and your work? You can learn more about me by visiting my website, www.chatablon.com. My contact information is there, as well as information on other books I've written and future projects. Thanks, Chad. Whether it's something for your own private use, like a family history, or if you're interested in writing and publishing, we invite you to take advantage of Biblio boards and other library platforms and resources for self-publishing. We also host writing groups at various library locations. The Writer's Info Guide can help you get started. Check it out. It's now time to check in with one of our younger patrons to find out what they've been reading at the library. I'm Carson. I'm nine years old. My favorite book is The Tale of Despero. This book is about a mouse, a rat, um, a girl named Megary Sow, and the mouse is trying to save the princess, and the rat is trying to come up with revenge to get on the princess because of, like, a glare she took on him. The kitchen floor with cooking oil instead of clean, sir. She sneezed directly into the king's pork chop moment before she, it was served to him. Of all the good-for-nothings I have encountered, shouted Cook, surely you're the worst. The worst curly founder, you're the good for nothingest. My mom brings me to the library. When I come to the library, I like to read the book I'm reading and sit down in like one of those rocking chairs and like just read for 30 minutes or something. Thanks, Carson. I love to see readers of all ages making good use of their library. Stay right there. You're watching the December edition of the Library Roadshow. The East Baton Rouge Parish Library believes that making things is good for us all. That's why we have maker spaces at four locations and a 3D printing service at the main library. The maker spaces have a variety of tools and equipment to enable both creative and practical projects. This includes 3D printers, sewing machines, audio visual gear, and much more. Get a library card. Get free access to maker spaces at ebrpl.com/makerspaces. You're watching the December edition of the Library Roadshow, a production of your East Baton Rouge Parish Library System. The library system hosts countless programs for the benefit of our patrons. Many are interesting, many are topical, and many are all of the above. My name is Warren Crone. I'm the GIS manager for the City Parish, and I work in the Department of Information Services. GIS stands for Geographic Information Systems. Uh, it's a technology that's everything location. So we tie location-based data with attribute data. It's, it's more than just a spreadsheet. So we, we can have all the attribute data about a location, but we can actually plot it on a map. This year, we are uh, back at the main library, Goodwood, to celebrate GIS Day Baton Rouge. This is actually our 10th annual event. It's International GIS Day across the whole world. There's hundreds of events that are uh, planned today. Um, and we have speakers that are coming in to talk about their use of GIS uh, in their, their offices, their businesses. We have lots of goodies for folks that want to come out and attend, t-shirts and other swag related to GIS. We want to educate the public on, on all the various applications of GIS and how, how they actually are using it in their daily lives without even realizing that this technology, you know, every, every time they go to a, a map per se to, to find a restaurant to go uh, that night to eat, they're, they're, you know, they're using a GIS map to find that location and maybe help them find the directions to get to it. For government, it's a system of record. Uh, all of the parish's asset data is recorded in the GIS. For example, sanitary sewer or stormwater, um, signs, you know, and then also the cadastral. So all of the property related information is stored in the GIS. And of course, we can then use that to do analysis and help with decision making. 10 years ago, when we held this first event, it was in the lobby of City Hall 
and I met uh, someone from the library staff that had come out that day to, to see what, what it was we were doing, and, and we talked right there on the spot and said, you know, this is something that we should really bring to the East Baton Rouge Parish Library and, and hold a, a bigger public event. Um, and each year, it's, it's uh, progressed. We have more and more people that come out. We have interesting speakers that, that uh, want to come out. And um, in my profession doing this, I hear from folks across the state that really look to the event that we have here in Baton Rouge as, as you know, it's a forerunner of this is, this is you know, good for the community. We've partnered with City Hall for years to bring you the annual GIS Day. Geographic information systems is a fascinating topic and offers a unique career path for those geographically and technically minded. And it's not just data for data's sake. Data-driven decision-making is the way to go. We're here at the main library at Goodwood to meet three Louisiana authors who are helping you get into the Christmas spirit. Let's check it out. Hi, I'm Morgan Tarpley Smith. I'm an author of Louisiana Christmas to Remember, one of the three authors, and I'm here at the library getting ready for an author talk, Q&A and book signing. We decided to write a series of stories. It's a three-in-one book, and we're gonna be talking about not only the book itself, but also the behind the scenes. It's an ongoing story that you read in order, kind of like a continuity, and it follows a strong Louisiana family of women. The reason I wrote the book with Betsy and Morgan is because um, we moved here in the early 80s, and um, my husband had a career in Shreveport. When we moved to Florida, I was really sad I was leaving, so I jumped at the chance to write a story about Louisiana, especially one that's Christmas, and um, three women, three very, four very strong women, and um, it was just so much fun. We had to figure out who was going to eat what in each story, like who's going to make cookies and who's going to do this, so we couldn't have all of it never even develop. It's fun to collaborate with people who have the same passion that you do. We all three love this state, and we all three wanted to write about it. We each had everything that we could bring to it. Morgan had the historical aspect. Betsy has the cutesy and the, the um, artistic. And then I had the old people to write about. So it was so much fun. If you literally Google any of our names, uh, LenoraWorth.com, BetsySaintAmont.com, WarrenTarpleySmith.com, there's more information about the book. It's also available anywhere that you would like to purchase it. It's available on audiobook as well, which is really fun to hear the book read. So, You can find more author events like these in the Source Newsletter every month or at EBRPL.com. Can't get enough of that holiday cheer. And now for today's contest, visit the library's Facebook page at facebook.com slash ebrpl. Tell us about your favorite family reading tradition. Do you snuggle up with the night before Christmas or a Christmas carol? Do you dance with a nutcracker, ride on the Polar Express, or stop the Grinch from stealing Christmas? Does your family celebrate another tradition, like Tree of Cranes, Night of the Moon, Little Rabbit's Kwanzaa, or Hanukkah Bear by our good friend and author Eric Kimmel? Or how about reading Gene Shepard's A Christmas Story before watching that marathon on TV? That's facebook.com slash ebrpl, and while you're there, enjoy. We're not your grandfather's library anymore. What's coming up on the Library Roadshow in January? New year, new opportunities for you at the library. Tune into the show next month and I'll share another free resource from inside the digital library at ebrpl.com. Join me next month and I'll take you to another awesome library program near you. Thanks so much for joining us on the Library Roadshow. And remember, your East Baton Rouge Parish Library is open seven days a week at each and every one of 14 branches, plus 24-7 on the web. Check us out at ebrpl.com. <laughs>